Hi, question number 8. The diagram shows the curve y is equal to cosec x for 0 is less or equal to x, I mean less than x, less than pi, and part of the curve y is equal to e to the power minus x. When x is equal to a, the tangents to the curves are parallel. By differentiating 1 over sine x, show that if y is equal to cosec x, then dy by dx equal to negative cosec x cot of x. Okay, for the first part, we need to differentiate this. Okay, so how are we going to differentiate that one? This is uh, this can be written as sine of x to the power of minus 1. Therefore, dy by dx is going to be minus 1 times sine x is minus sine of x to the power of minus 2. And you differentiate sine, you're going to get cos of x. Okay, so what are we saying? We're saying that it is negative cos of x divided by sine of x times sine of x. Cos of x is cot of x and we have negative and then we have times 1. 1 of the sine of x is cos of x. Okay, so now this one has been shown. For the second part, uh, we need to equate the gradients. We have a curve y is equal to e to the, mi to the minus x. And in the question we are told that by equating the gradients to the curves at x is equal to e, you know, we need to show, okay, that a is equal to inverse tan of e to the a over sine of a. We're going to differentiate this. So dy by dx is equal to negative 1 times e, so negative e to the negative x. This gradient is equal to that gradient. So these two are equal. Therefore, we're going to say negative e to the negative x is equal to negative cot of x cosec x. So the negative and the negative will cross out. We've got 1 over e to the x is equal to cot of x and cosec of x. So inverse this, reverse it, and you're going to get e to the x is equal to 1 over cot of x and cosec x. So 1 over cot is tan of x, 1 over cosec is sine of x. Therefore, the sine can come on this side. So we have got e to the x divided by sine of x is equal to tan of x. This is at x is equal to a. So we're going to say then um, inverse, if you send the tan on the other side, becomes inverse tan of a. All right. And um, okay, so we're going to say e to the a. All right, divided by sine of a. And this is going to be a. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. This is exactly the same as x is equal to inverse tan of e to the x over sine of x. So what we just did is we just substituted x for a everywhere because we are told that at x is equal to a, the gradient of this is equal to the gradient. These two gradients here are equal. This one and this one are equal. Okay. Now for the third part, Verify by calculation that A lies between 1 and 1.5. So if we verify by calculation, if we put 1.5 here, 1.5 here, and check it out in your calculator, you're going to get a positive value. If you put 1, you're going to get a positive value again. So it doesn't work. If you use this formula, it's not going to work. I'm going to go for this, this formula here. E to the x, let us say E to the A is equal to tan of A sine of A. Send everything here, I got then F A is equal to E to the A minus tan of A sine of A. So let's do F1. That's going to be E to the power of 1 minus tan of 1 times the sine of 1. So the tan of 1 multiplied by the sine, sorry, the sine of 1. And then you're going to take E, okay, and you minus the value. It's going to give you 1.407. So that's going to give us 1.407 something. F1.5, you're going to get, okay, one, E to the power of 1.5 minus tan of 1.5 sine of 1.5. Okay. So e to the power of 1.5, okay, minus in brackets uh, sine of 1.5 times the tan of 1.5, negative 
five eight. So we're gonna get we're get, we're getting a negative value. One is positive, one is negative. So what can we conclude? Therefore, since okay f one times f one point five gives a negative value. Thus, there lies a root between these two intervals or between these intervals. All right, for the fourth part, use an iterative formula based on the equation in part two. This iterative formula to determine correct to three decimal places, they give the result to determine a correct to three decimal places, give the result of each iteration to five decimal places. So we're going to use the formula um, a is equal to inverse tan of e to the a. What is an initial value of a? Okay, we have 1.5 and 1. So if you take 1 plus 1.5 and you divide by 2, you're going to get 1.25. So we're going to say 1.25. This is an initial value of a divided by the sine of 1.25. Let's do this on our calculator. So I'm going to say inverse, sorry, no, uh, e to the 1.25, okay, divided by sine of 1.25. And then you take inverse tan of the answer. So, oops. Um, okay, so let's do this again. e to the power of 1.25 divided by sine of 1.25. Then you're going to take inverse tan of the answer. It's going to give us 1.30533. So 1.30533. All right, let me check it out again. 1.03533 to five decimal places. Okay, so the second value is going to be if you do it on your calculator e to the power of 1.30533 this time divided by sine of 1.0533 you're going to end up with 1.31494 again you do another iteration this time inverse time of 1.31494 and you divide by sine of 1.31494 Work that out in the calculator, you will see you come to this value 1.31666. Again, A, so we have got inverse tan of uh, E to the power of 1.31666 over sine of 1.31666. Okay, and this time 1.31697. Again, you can do another iteration, 1.31697, okay, and you divide by the sine of 1.31697, and this time it's going to be um, 1.31703. So let's do a last one if we wish, inverse, is equal to inverse tan of e to the 1.31703 all divided by sine of 1.31703 and this time you're going to end up with um, 1.31704 now we can see clearly 1.316, 1.316, 1.317, 1.317 again so all of that is converging to a root which is approximately 1.32 to two decimal places as stipulated in the question. So here we are for this question taken from June 2016, Advanced Level Maths HSC P3.